Hey, I'm David Liggett with Data Center Hawk, and I am really excited to be sitting in INAPS Dallas Data Center uh, here in Plano, and I am with Tom Panarisi, Regional Vice President with their team. Thank you, Tom, for joining us. Thank you. We're really excited to get to learn more about uh, what INAP is doing uh, here in Dallas, but also across the world. Uh, and uh, But let's start with um, Dallas, because we are sitting here. Tell us about uh, your recent growth here. You know, Dallas, from Data Center Hawk's perspective, it's the third largest data center market in the U.S. Uh, obviously, the business, or the companies that are here, are, are um, the, the list is long, and so the, the demand is, is traditionally strong in this market. But tell us why you all decided to uh, double down and expand in Dallas. Yeah, um, we we just opened our second uh, phase two facility. It's uh, 20,000 square feet, two megawatts of power, expandable to five megawatts. Okay. Uh, we felt like we wanted to bring something different to the market. You know, we see a lot of big big data centers coming into the market. Uh, we felt like we have an existing customer base that we can service and support. Um, and so we felt like um, five megawatts would get us through for our existing base and be able to still support the retail customers along with wholesale customers yeah. that come in. Uh, so, uh, you know, we've been in this data center for six, seven years now, uh -huh. and um, it's, it's almost at capacity, so we wanted to be able to grow our business, and we felt like uh, this is a great market for us, and yeah. we're going to continue to grow it. One of the things that you mentioned right there, which I think is interesting, is the different types of customers that, that you will have and other data center operators have. How do you go about trying to best serve a one cabinet customer that has you know a, a legitimate demand, but also uh, you know serve customers that have larger demand and, and the difference differences between those. But what, what's the magic formula to doing that well? So we've uh, traditionally been a network provider. Yeah. And that's how we built our roots. And so there's been a lot of legacy customers in the data center, maybe some smaller customers that mm -hmm. have grown. So we've seen a lot of customers who have come in with maybe one or two cabinets uh -huh. and be able to support them and we'll, we'll, we can essentially support their requirements and then be able to grow them into a 10, 15 cabinet customer and be able to sell them additional services in other data centers. So disaster recovery as a service, DR as a service, BCDR, you know, business continuity, disaster yep. recovery, um, customers that need to tie their infrastructures together with network mm -hmm. and be able to um, replicate their data yep. in another data center that grows our footprint in all the data centers. So that would be like the traditional small, you know, small customer. Uh, but then we also have customers that um, in this data center that have taken a megawatt of power. Um, so it's it's nice to be able to support um, everything from a one cabinet user to um, a one megawatt user yeah. and anything in between. And then, you know, obviously we're a cloud service provider and, and we're able to support customers who want to scale into our private cloud and, and be able to use those yeah. uh, resources as they grow. Yeah, you, um, so, you know, uh, INAP's footprint has grown over the last uh, several months, and y'all have done, I would say in the last 12, 12 months or so, you, you've done, uh, really, there's been a resurgence in your company, and y'all have somewhat of a new vision, mm -hmm. but talk about, um, you know, from 2018, what's on INAP's roadmap, the new vision for the company, and what y'all hope to accomplish this year. Yeah, so, uh, so recently we purchased a company called Single Hot yeah. out of Chicago, um, privately held company. And uh, the reason why we purchased them is for a couple of various reasons, but uh, the primary reason was because they have a private managed hosting, uh, private cloud solution. Uh -huh. um, and they're a very well-known company in that specific space, and they've done a really good job, and they're very, I would say, like more of a boutique type of uh -huh. supplier of, of hosting services. So, um, so our, our roadmap as we go forward is to integrate uh, single hop into the INAP platform. Okay. Um, we bought them for a couple other reasons as well. It gives us a lot of uh, ability to scale. Um, scale meaning um, they have multiple footprints in, in uh, other parts of the world okay. as well. Um, Singapore and um, in Europe as well that they have their cloud footprint. Uh -huh. And so we're able to take advantage of that for our customers that are co-location, traditional co-location type customers. Um, the, the fact that they have a portal that is something that is very unique for INAP. We don't we didn't traditionally have something that was um, very user friendly for our customers. They have something that gives customers the ability to spin up servers, um, look at their resources, see if they're being utilized properly, see if they need to add additional resources, um, all within a single pane of glass. And so um, the ability to spin up servers um, very quickly is something that uh, is a, a very important for us as we go forward as well for our existing base plus the customers yeah. that are coming in. Yeah, I think one of the things that 
data center operators have done a uh, much better job of over the last you know five years or so is really listening and understanding the customer better and you know the acquisition that you mentioned I mean one of them just from an uh, you know users wanting to understand their environment more mm -hmm. uh, wanting you know easier access to getting services uh, to changing their environment uh, you know makes a lot of sense it's it's the way we see other businesses working and so to take an infrastructure business and apply that same approach while it's hard I definitely think the the desire is there from customers when you think about customers today what are some other things you're seeing uh, drive the different customers that INAP has whether they're financial users healthcare users gaming companies whatever mm -hmm. users those are what are you seeing really drive their demand so it, it's uh, a lot of it is um, customer facing content customers uh, that in the we do a lot in the ads ad tech space and, and gaming space and um, they're just growing and yeah, blowing up. Yeah. So uh, so one of the one of the solutions that we have for our customers is a bare metal solution where we have servers sitting there. A customer comes in, drops our operating system on the server. And they have back end storage requirements we can support as well, and then we supply them security on the front end and the network. Um, so that's a huge demand for our uh, existing customers uh -huh. today, and um, it's it's something that we're taking advantage of. Um, the other thing too is, is we're just seeing a lot of financial institutions um, and a lot of um, manufacturers actually hmm. coming in and buying uh, traditional services as well. So it really, um, the unique thing about INAP as we you know evolve and we continue to evolve is um, we can supply services to uh, any, any type of service to any end user. Yep. What I mean by that is the co-location services, the traditional space and power, sure. uh, the managed hosted platform where we can go out and purchase specific servers, network infrastructure, and storage for a customer, stand it up, support it, manage it, and be able to supply additional services they mm -hmm. grow. And then your private cloud solution where they can take advantage of those sort resources already there, um, and then bare metal servers as well. So um, then you layer the network on top of that, which is our uh -huh. traditional IP network, and be able to bring it all together and let customers you know, use our multi-cloud platform um, it gives them the ability to scale, grow, and future-proof them as they as they continue. Yeah, how are you seeing customers approach uh, the density of their environments, given the fact that um, you know data center users are becoming more mature, uh, they want to utilize their environment more efficiently. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges you're seeing them go through as they look to do that? Yeah, the challenge that I think everybody probably has, and we have it as well, is um, customers come in and they always think that they have requirements for more power. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, you know, you'll sell them, you know, a certain amount of power and they generally will never get to that level. Uh -huh. um, and then in addition to that, you have the same customers who want to pay for, uh, you know, what they want to use. And yes. So we have a lot of resources that are unused and we're essentially paying for those. So that's one of the biggest challenges that we have and I think um, an industry challenge. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is be able to, we you know, we have a BMS system um, where uh -huh. we're trying to make sure that when a customer comes in, we monitor their power, we give them good feedback on what maybe they can do differently or utilize better to, to help them cut their costs as well and be able to you know, use their OPEX yeah. as best possible. Yeah, what can a user do to make sure that, because we have some users and you know, end user companies that watch our content, what can, some end, what can these end user companies do to make sure that they're making the best decision? You know, one thing we often try and highlight is that if if you're, in, if you're a company and you're going to partner with a, a data center provider, it is a partnership. I mean, there's times that you'll be in the trenches and, and you've got to have someone that really wants the best interests of your company to succeed in whatever the IT infrastructure project is. So in your experience, what have you seen companies do to make sure that they, they partner well and they partner with the right group? Yeah, I, 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 it's, a, it's a hard question to, uh, to answer because, yeah. you know, people want to have more power uh, to be able to you know grow into that power as well um, I think one of the things that we do is we do a lot of consulting up front yeah so customers who come in um, we want to understand their infrastructure like what are you bringing into the data center what is a traditional draw of each piece of equipment um, and and so when we do that and we try to make sure that you know they understand what the data center offers and uh, you know whether they need a certain power receptacle or another power uh -huh. receptacle I think um, in the end um, you know, you just try to do your best and try to be able to supply them with whatever they think they need and understand it and then be able to, to move quickly in case they have additional requirements yeah, where sure. maybe they're a little short or something yeah, like that. you I, bet. I just, I just think there's not an easy answer to that because it's uh, traditionally always been a problem. Yeah, well, and it's also, I think, challenging because companies' needs change over time. And so 
you yeah. know, if you're a company and you have a certain IT infrastructure project and you acquire another company six months later, you know, all of a sudden Absolutely. that changes the portfolio, that changes the where production, the production uh, requirement might be, the DR requirement. So I think there's a lot of moving parts obviously can make that challenging. Um, how have you seen companies handle migration well, you know, and that might be moving out of an owned premises into a third party data center. It might be taking resources out of co-location and placing them in, you know, public or private cloud. Mm -hmm. How have you seen companies do that process well? So, uh, so we see that quite regularly uh -huh. uh, and we do have customers that have that requirement. Um, it, it just depends on, you know, what their pain threshold is, uh -huh. I think a lot of times. We'll have customers who cannot have any downtime. Um, and what we'll do in that scenario is they can use our, our private cloud, be able to migrate their data okay. into our private cloud. And if they need to um, repurpose that, their own infrastructure into a data center, be able to move it into the data center, and then as they stand that new that old infrastructure up, migrate it into their back into their yeah. their private cloud. Yeah. Um, so we've had customers do that. Um, you know, the public cloud is always an option as well, um, depending on you know where their relationships are. And you know, a lot of times we have customers that can do a forklift move. Uh -huh. um, and the customers that generally can do more of a forklift move are the customers who have a DR site. Sure. So if they have a primary and a secondary, they need to you know move the primary. And we're we're going through that right now with a couple customers actually, um, where they can they have the ability to shut down their primary because they have a secondary, move their infrastructure into uh -huh. our data center, and then turn it back up. Yeah, I think it's one of the interesting things, at least that we're seeing. You're mentioning some of the different services that you all offer and that customers can and use today as it relates to co-location and cloud, but I think one of the really interesting things that we are trying to track is the hybrid IT approach and how companies really build a strategy around being able to utilize both, you know, whether it is public or private cloud or whether it is co-location uh, or whether it is managed services, how they blend mm -hmm. an approach together that gets them the most efficient, uh, you know, the best uh, approach that serves their company down the road. That is really interesting and I think that's really what's driving um, obviously, a lot of the growth that we've seen in the industry over the last, you know, several years. Um, as you all think about INAP and the services that you all provide, how do you feel like you can attract those type of customers? I mean, how do you feel like you can really uh, help them as they try to figure out what their solution is today, but then also know that that'll change in the future? So um, it is one of our main value props. Uh, because of the product offering that we have, uh -huh. where, you know, we're not just a colo shop or a hosting yep. shop or yep. a cloud shop. Uh, because we we supply everything, uh, we have customers today that have their own colo, uh, and if they need to use our resources, we have them to be able to tie in to our our resources. In 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 particular, in Dallas, right behind us here, uh -huh. um, we have customers who use their own colo and then tie into our cloud, and uh -huh. when they need to burst or leverage additional resources, they don't have to spend the CapEx. Uh -huh. They have the, the resources sitting right here, which gives them the ability to scale. Sitting where you're sitting today, Regional Vice President with the INAP, talk about what you're most excited about in the industry. You know, and, and we look at the space and think about how much businesses are de you know, depending on their IT infrastructure for uh, their growth, for their everyday business operations. Um, and you all are one of the companies that's you know supplying that backbone. But talk about what are you most excited about when you think about years to come? Yeah, I, I think for me, um, and I've been doing this uh, for a, quite a long time for with a couple of different companies, but in the data center yeah. business for a while. Um, I just think that what we're seeing today is really the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. and, and we see a lot of hyperscale users coming in. We see a lot of retail customers coming in. And we see that their growth is still out there for a lot of our data center markets. And um, it's exciting because, you know, we're still in a, in a double digit growth mode with our data centers and we are, are being able to service all those customers and play in a lot of different opportunities is something to me that's, um, you know, exciting and, and we continue to, we'll continue to see, uh, you know, those opportunities. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the ability to support all those customers, yeah. right? InterNAP's been around a long time. Now we're INAP. We rebranded the company, um, and we felt like we are more of a technology-based company um, to be able to support customers and, and provide them that whole product. Yeah. So. And why has connectivity become more important for users? Well, you know, you have these customers who maybe um, five years ago didn't have the, some of the bandwidth yeah. requirements that they have. So maybe a gigabit of connectivity uh, five years ago um, is now a requirement calls for 10 or even 100 gig uh, requirement. And a lot of customers 
or even looking at dark fiber um, to be able to facilitate their requirements. I think a lot of it has to do with just um, the content that's out there and being able to have their customers access that content um, is immense and really important for them um, to be able to take advantage of. So, you know, there's, there's, you have customers that are doing ad tech, you have customers that are doing media, you have customers that are doing traditional, um, you know, the manufacturers and, and those, any, any customer, um, I just think that the more users they have, the more users they want to get their content out to, um, is, is, is a, a lot of it has to do with that. Yeah, you bet. Well, Tom, thank you for hosting us in Dallas. This thank has you been so awesome much. to talk thank with you. you again. Tom Pan Panarisi, Regional Vice President with INAP. If you want to learn more uh, about INAP, you can get on their website. It's INAP.com. And if you want to learn more about Data Center Hawk, you can check us out online as well. Thanks for watching.